guys, um, some of you came to me before our spring break and asked for some ideas about what to do with some leg pain and also some hip pain and specifically sciatica. So I wanted to show you, um, did, I've done a little research over the break. And of course there can be a lot of causes uh, to uh, pains, but let's um, look at specifically um, the sciatic nerve and where it is on the body. It starts in the lower back and it runs deep through your buns and thighs and along the sides of your legs, okay? It, um, it, it can be compressed, it can be irritated, it, there can be injury to this nerve um, or the lower vertebrae. Uh, it can be tight, it can be overused. Um, injured muscles can also cause sciatica pain. It's uh, characterized as being sharp or throbbing or a burning sensation that shoots or radiates down your legs. Um, you also could feel numbness, tingling, and inflammation. And so I've looked up some yoga postures um, that could help. And if it's, here's the thing that I love about yoga that even um, if it's not exactly maybe sciatica, that is your issue, uh, these postures are gonna be things that help uh, you find alignment and, and, and right imbalances that you have in your body. And I just wanted to show you this pretty cool program. If we turn on the muscles that surround the sciatic nerve, um, you it's really fascinating how the uh, nervous system is, um, you, you know, your, your layers to your body and look how the muscles are just around and about. And then we can even add more layers uh, to the nervous system as well. All right. Yeah, that might be all. All right. So anyway, so what we're going to do today are going to be things that are help your low back area, your legs, um, your buns, um, and it'll help help with circulation and flexibility. And, and hopefully it'll provide the, um, the uh the relief that some of you are thinking that yoga can bring to you because that's what has been so helpful for me is that yoga has uh made me feel stronger in my body and um it doesn't get rid of aches and pains but it does sure help you manage them and feel like you have some measure of um if you're making some inquiries if you're doing some work on it that that um i learned um this weekend that just the act of trying to to solve the problem helps the problem. All right, so um, let's start off with a movement called child's pose. And when you do that one, you're going to um, uh, come down to the hands and the knees and you're going to uh, take your toes together, take your knees wide, maybe as wide as your mat, and then you're gonna push your hips back and stretch arms forward, relaxing your forehead, to the ground or you can stack your fist or you may um there in yoga we can use blocks and things to help the ground come up to um where you are uh, pillows are good couch cushions anything you have available and if your hips are not re finding rest like if you're not flexing um, through that part of your body you can take um props and put them behind your legs to help you the idea here is you don't want to hang so if you want to put like a pillow something back here to help you feel more uh, supported than you do, okay? Take some good deep breaths in this posture. Breathe in, breathe in. And take uh, three breaths, five breaths, ten breaths. Whatever may feel good to you. And when you're ready, roll on over to your, um, oh, no, let's do one on our tummy before we um, do that. And that I'm going to turn this way just because I can see my computer is showing a little bit different. Um, there we go. Um, all right, so this is called a locust pose. And you can, of course, just lay down from your belly from child's pose to do this. And the locust pose um, is going to be one where you're gonna keep your gaze looking towards the mat. And um, I like to do this very systematically because I tend to um, um, work muscles maybe that um, don't need to be worked when you, when you do this. Like, um, like I put the work too much in another place. So let's start with toes and lift um, and squeeze legs and lift. And you're gonna try to lift the legs off the ground. And then you can um, then engage the muscles of the back, muscles of the upper back, 
And then maybe your hands can go forward or your hands can reach back. And then finally you lift the head. I usually try to lift my head right off and maybe work my neck muscles more than I should, all right? And then really squeeze, squeeze, squeeze as you continue to breathe and then relax all the muscles. And you can support your um, head like a pillow and flop the hips from side to side to release the low back. And then try that again. So this is called locust pose or a superhero pose. And you are really strengthening all the muscles of the whole back body. But be really systematic about it. And don't just jerk up like I say. I usually tend to jerk my head up off um, the ground first. So let's try it again. All right, so we're going to do legs first. Squeeze the legs all the way to the bones, your glutes. Squeeze the back muscles, upper back muscles. I feel my head trying to come up. Here we go. And then you can reach arms like back towards your feet. You can reach hands forward. And then let it go. Let it go. All right, rock the hips from side to side. Breathe it in, breathe it out. And let's do that one more time. Three times the charm, right? All right, here we go. Lengthen and squeeze your legs, all the legs, the buns, the back muscles arms and then lift your head and breathe as you strengthen and then let it go again flopping your hips from side to side and now we'll push ourselves up and we'll roll over to the back body okay locust pose is helpful for your back your glutes your thighs uh, muscles and child's pose is also stretching your hips thighs and leg back all right um on the back body we're going to take the knees to the chest so this is again lower back hips and glutes and this is really kind of the reverse of child's pose so what you're going to do here is you're taking your knees to your chest and you're rocking and rolling side to side Breathing in and out. And you can then um, take your hands to your knees, maybe, and draw some circles on the ceiling, working both ways to get some work in the hips. You can hold behind the knees if that feels too, you know, if you're pulling too much uh, with um, hands on knees. Really, as you work, listen to what your body is telling you. If you feel any pain and discomfort, um, Take that as a message, and what's that message? Is that message like, oh, this is not something you've used in a long time. Oh, this is good, you need to use it. Or is it a sharp pain? Ooh, that means probably back off. Probably need to um, investigate that further, right? All right, from this position, we're gonna do a position where you take the ankle across the knee and pull the thigh muscles uh, towards your body very gently and feel the work that happens in the um, hip as you pull the knee towards the chest. Again, not to the point where you're out, oh, oh, oh. you want it just to be a gentle stretch here and you're breathing in and breathing out. You wanna keep the foot um, flexed here. Take the good belly breath as you work. All day long, we take those shallow breaths, but really concentrate on taking a deep breath, and that activates calm in your body, in your brains, in your heart, and helps that stretch work a little bit better. All right, so then we're going to take the opposite ankle to knee, over the knee, pull that leg towards the chest. You may find that one side feels um, like it stretches further than the other, and that's that's very normal to not have um, a match in what you experience from one side to the opposite side of the body. I took a workshop this weekend that I absolutely loved and the um, teacher said that he had a massage therapist friend who had only met two people in all his career that had eight uh, symmetrical bodies. Like, you know, their one side was pretty much like their other. And he said, they weren't very interesting people at all. <laughs> I thought that was great. So the more lopsided we are, hey, the more interesting and the more exciting lives we've led that lead us to having lopsided or um, being asymmetrical with our bodies. Okay, from here, you can roll to your side body. 
and you can push them to the floor or you can rock and roll to standing or uh, uh, you know to uh, um to whatever feels good to you in your back you can rock and roll or like i said you can push right up into the um uh the floor and then come up and that'll work too okay um from here we want to do a movement called half moon i love this one and um sorry you're getting a really good view of my electrical outlet there aren't you? <laughs> all right so what you're going to do with half moon is you're actually going to stand uh, with your body against the wall all right and then you're going to um take um the uh block or a chair or a uh, i have a, um, a bench chair that'll work on that side when we do that side but what you're going to do is you're going to put that down in front of you probably about a foot off of the foot so uh, like a foot space off of the foot your body part All right so let me just do it down like this so you can kind of see more all right my feet are side by side like they're on railroad tracks and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take the side of my body that's against the wall and i'm going to reach that hand towards that chair or that block or that um couch or bench or whatever you've got that you can reach down to and then i'm going to take this leg and i'm actually going to stack it on this leg like hip to hip, hip stacks on hip so i'm going to reach down and as i reach down I'm going to stretch up and I'm going to stack my hips. Okay, keep your a good uh, flex in the foot. And then I'm going to try to reach the opposite hand um, up to the seat uh, up the wall. And I'm going to try to look towards that hand or if that doesn't feel good in your neck, you can look down. Now this is getting a good stretch in your back, your glutes, your thighs. And I just really love how wide open you feel in your chest when you do this. And when you use the wall to help you do it, it really is supportive and it feels kind of yummy. And it's a balancing pose. So with balancing poses, you're really concentrating and focusing to get her done. When you're ready, you lower your back leg as gracefully as you can, okay? And again, I could use the bench that I have over here, but I'll just um, move my block, all right? And try it on this side. Blocks, if you do invest in a yoga block, it's got three heights to it, right? So it's kind of very a useful tool to helping your hands be longer or helping you get uh, support or um, work a, a yoga posture in a better way. So it's a good investment if you like to, um, buy you one. All right, so here we are, feet side by side, about a foot ahead of us is the block. I'm going to reach down to the block as I use the wall to support my body, and then I'm going to lift my leg, stack my hips, so hip is on hip, look at my shoulder joints, they should be stacked too. I'm reaching up, leaning on the wall for support, and I'm breathing. So this move is called Balancing Half Moon. And when you've had all the fun you can have with that, you lower as gracefully as you can the back leg um, and, uh, and you um, thank your body for trying something new. All right, uh, we're gonna come down to um, uh, the ground again. And what we're gonna do now is called a bridge pose. And there's several ways to work a bridge pose. And I'm gonna show you a way to relax in a bridge. It's called a restorative bridge. And then I'm gonna show you a working bridge. Um, and then we're gonna do a twist and a rest. And that'll be our fun uh, to um, help you with uh, this request. All right, hopefully it is being helpful. Um, you're feeling some work happening in your body. You're feeling some stretch and some relaxing. Okay, so with bridge pose, you're on your back body. And uh, to work it, let me work it first. Um, you're gonna take your elbows right by your side body. You're gonna have your feet um, right near your hips. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna press into feet and hips as you strengthen through the core uh, and the leg and the glutes, all right? Now, you can uh, interlace fingers underneath the bum, roll up on the shoulders to get more of an arch, 
in the body. Now, I don't have a very big arch in my body, so you might have more of an arch or lift in your bridge pose. But your bridge pose, you can, get, you can hold it for several breaths, and then you can roll down, and then you can come back up in it again and work it two or three times like we did with locust pose. But for today, what I'll do is just untangle my fingers, relax my back body, roll my backbone down, one vertebrae at a time, uncurling the hips last. And then a second way I wanna show it to you is with um, uh, the help of the block. So with this, this is called a restorative bridge. And so we'll set up just like before, where we push into the floor with feet and elbows, really working uh, the body. But this time we'll slide the um, block underneath the sacrum of the body that um, sits kind of under your bum, not on your back, underneath your bum, right? The triangle is shaped at the bottom of the uh, spine is what we call the sacrum. And here's where you can hang out in bridge two and you get the same benefits. One's more of a work and one's more of a, a resting uh, way to get her done, but both will get her done. All right, after several breaths, you can lift up and take the block out, roll the back one vertebrae down at a time. It's good to feel your whole back on the floor for several breaths, and then you can pull the knees towards the chest and you can rock and roll. All right, again, you can rock and roll to sit up or you can roll to the side body, push into the floor, and you can come up for a twist. Um, uh, and then we'll rest, right? So this twist, you can take a leg long or you can take a leg and you can take it and tuck it under the body. Either way works fine. The other leg is gonna be tall, all right? So again, this can be tall, this can be long, this can be tall, and this can be tucked, all right? What you're gonna do is you're gonna take um, the opposite um, arm and you're gonna, you're gonna reach around and you're gonna give a hug to that knee. As you stretch up and over, back and down, and you're gonna look over um, that um, shoulder towards the space behind you. And wherever you are in this twist is gonna be just right. So you may not, maybe not looking as far, you may be looking farther. All right, but the idea is to grow tall on the breath in, and then on the breath out, get a little more to the squeeze of the twist. All right, you can take three breaths, four breaths, five breaths, 10 breaths, all right, whatever works good. And then we're gonna work that on the other side. All right, so you're going to take the opposite leg tall and lengthen the leg, um, or again, you can tuck it, however works great for you. I'll lengthen this one just to show you how they look differently, um, but work about the same. You're gonna reach around and um, give this knee a hug, and maybe this is what you got. But if you can do more, another way to find that um, look behind you is to take a hand to a shoulder, roll the elbow up and back and over, plant that uh, like a, um, a support behind you and look over and breathe. Breathing in, growing tall. And on the exhale, get a little more to the twist. Again, three breaths, five breaths, 10 breaths, whatever feels right for you is going to be the right amount to work. And then um, we're going to do what's called a rest. And actually, this is, if you have only time to do one thing, um, I know that I shared this already, um, this pattern, this is the one thing to do. And she said that it was already helping her feel a little bit better. Um, whenever I, one of my first takeaways from my work in the yoga therapy uh, program was that most people need to rest. Most muscles don't need to get stretched more. What they need is to relax. They're tight and they need to, the muscles just need to rest. And so this can be very helpful on so many levels. Um, you can do it uh, with a chair. Um, you can do what's called 90-90 constructive rest, or you can do legs up the wall. Um, so with, uh, with this idea, you can sidle up next to a bench or a chair. You can put your feet in the um, chair seat, and you can rest with your um, back on the floor, head on the floor, supported uh, back to the hands. 
um, and arms. And you can hang out here for as long as you want. Another way to do it is to sidle up to a wall and this will stretch the backs of the legs more. So this can give you some extra benefits with hamstrings, but you play it by ear. That's maybe more accessible to put it legs in a chair. And whatever you can do is what you wanna do. All right, so feet are on the wall. And then breathe and relax. And again, you can do it for a short rest, a long rest, however much time you have. But if you can spend uh, five minutes of your day with your legs at the wall, you can have a lot of great benefits. Not just with the sciatica or the hip pain or leg pain you may be experiencing, but all oh, kinds of benefits. And I even had one um, teacher who told me it made your aging processes go backwards. And she looked pretty young and she was uh, 60 years old. I think she looked 40. <laughs> All right. Bring a little movement back into your body. All right. You can pull the legs down. You can rock and roll on the back body, stretch arms overhead, whatever you need to do. I hope these ideas have been helpful. I hope that um, there might be something in here that you can incorporate um, because the idea is for you to do what feels right to help yourself. Um, I just want to offer you lots of tools to put in your toolbox and then you get out the one that fits uh, when you need it. All right. Thank you for taking some good deep breaths and moving your body with me today. Feel, feel your best, everybody. Thank you.